18. The operation was basically a cleanup proposition. The landing had cindered hundreds of the bugs. The force field perimeter had locked out the remainder. Only about 25 of the aliens had made it past the harpoons before the field crackled on. These were the current targets. These were the bugs that had to be crushed. Vague colorings or internal differences didn't seem to matter. From the way these things acted, all were every centimeter the crazed berserkers their cousins were. The lip of the ramp had not been touched down, and one of them leapt on it, scuttling up towards them, slavering and tearing away at the air. Simultaneous, she cried, and lifted her own rifle and fired. The blast of weapons was so strong converging on the bug that the force lifted the thing up a good meter and slammed it back another ten. Damned good thing, too. It disintegrated into a splatter of parts and blood in midair. Keep that shit off the hull, Kozlowski cried. Okay, now, move it! As practiced before, the troops moved out, plasma weapons first. A robo-wagon trundled out after them, bearing extra weapons, supplies, and automatic support keyed from the anteater. As soon as the first four marines cleared the bottom of the ramp, they started blasting. A wave of fire, like a manic flamethrower on amphetamines, roared out, whacking into a group of five bugs, scampering into the melee. They all fell apart in the hellish fire. Kozlowski and the others were out in a flash, bringing up the rear and selecting targets. Kozlowski felt as though she just downed a couple tabs of Xenozip. Adrenaline? Yes, and Bliss too. It had been a long time since she'd fought real Xenos, and there was nothing like the satisfaction of the prospect of one's slugs putting out the lights on a bug to get a gal's heart to thumping. Fire at will, she said. She jumped off the ramp and swiveled over to cover the underside of the lander. A space of about seven meters existed between the base of the lander and the ground. All in shadow. Unlikely that any had scuttled under here. But you never knew. She nudged the correct comm switch. Turn on the bottom lights, Control. Roger. The lights started to blink on but even before they were up through the heightened ears of the suit, she heard the telltale hissing. Damn! One was coming toward her. They had descended to mission control to stand and watch beside Corporal Seamus O'Connor. As the monitors flashed the frenetic details of the conflict, Daniel Grant felt giddy victory turn his skin to goosebumps. What a spectacle. Whatever doubts he'd ever felt about the competency of this batch of Marines disappeared within seconds. As the group fanned out in perfect formation, their weapons efficiently blasting away. Out in the open, the alien strategy seemed simple. Charge and destroy. The Marine strategy seemed equally simple. Blast the things to bits. The Marines acted like precision-centered robots. Their aims were deadly, like a phalanx of destruction. They performed this grisly pyrotechnic ballet. Grant suddenly wished for some appropriate music. O'Connor was clearly equally impressed. Wow, he turned to Dr. Begali. Those suits you produce are working great. Used to be you couldn't fight those things in such close quarters. Indeed, Grant noted. As the radium bullets, the plasma blasts, and the tossed explosives struck the aliens, rupturing the chitinous material of their exoskeletons, they tended to burst apart like ripe tomatoes atop M80s. Their blood, a viscous green ichor, hurled 
every which way, slapping across the white armor and helmets the Marines wore. The skin of the suit ruptured, fluid leaked out, instantly neutralizing the horrible full-bore effects of the acid. Then the skin healed, and voila, no harm done to the Marine. Nonetheless, the troops seemed to be trying for the knees and the heads, as Colonel Kozlowski had instructed them, waiting till the aliens were prone before they blasted the torso apart. Whatever they were doing, whatever the plan had been, it seemed to be working just fine. True, the alien blood was leaving pox and craters in the ground, but the soldiers were trained to deal with them. Particularly impressive in his efforts was Corporal Hendrickson. Like some military juggernaut, he moved over the battlescape with fierce speed and agility, his plasma rifle snuffing out aliens and putting them to fiery deaths in what seemed like speeded up film. Man, said Grant, look at Hendrickson go. Quite something, said Bigali. He's a regular one-man army, yes? I've heard rumors. Some of the troops think he's a synthetic, said O'Connor. What the hell does it matter, said Grant. He's doing his job and damned well. Dr. Begali shook his head. True, true. With soldiers like that, we're going to get into the nest. Grant looked up just in time to see an odd look pass over Begali's face. A squinting, feral look. Like a rat considering the implications of a maze. And looking forward as much to shitting in the passageways as to getting to the cheese at the other end. But then, Begali had always struck him as one odd customer. And so he just set the observance aside and turned back to his marvelous bloody sport up there on the screen. All he needed now was beer and some peanuts. It was a big one. The alien under the lander scrambled for Kozlowski like some frenetic dinosaur closing in for the kill on what it considered a soft-bellied mammal. Just try, asshole, said Kozlowski, whipping her gun up. The lights came on full bore, stopping the thing, not one stride but illuminating it thoroughly. She fired. The burst of bullets from her semi-automatic rifle fanned out perfectly. Textbook, the explosive slugs, caught the thing in the kneecaps, exploding them. The beast went down, snarling and hissing, scrambling for her without missing a beat. She drew a bead on its banana-like head and squeezed off another burst. The thrill of competency seized her as the head burst apart. The blast kicked back a dollop of blood onto her suit. Her reaction was knee-jerk terror. Experience had taught her that a burst of Xeno blood on armor meant trouble. Then her brain kicked in, solving her trained reaction with reality. This was a special suit. Time to see if it worked. The guinea pig. Herself. The junk immediately sizzled and bubbled through the plastic lining. Like oozing pus, the neutralizing agent flowed out and swallowed the acid. Sizzled. Bubble. The plastic shell moved back over the hole, and the suit was whole again. Unfortunately, there wasn't a lot of time to feel good about it. Already, three more aliens were running her way underneath the lander. She picked off the right one. Knees. Head. Torso. The weapons these days were so good. The shells just cut through that damn exoskeleton like it was the thinnest of tin. So satisfying just seeing them burst like that. Overripe gourds in a shooting gallery. Another soldier was beside her. The name tag read Mahoney. No discussion, just quick efficient drawing of a bead. And then her gun coughed off, dealing amazing damage to the beast to their left. 
They swiveled as one, and their fire converged on the central alien, only five yards away now. The strength of their blasting shattered the thing, and its blood blew back as well among the tumble and tatters of its wasted body. He looked like my last boyfriend, said Mahoney over the radio, her voice sounding immensely satisfied. No, said Kozlowski. Seems to me the others look more like boyfriends. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's waste them. Mahoney's grin showed through her faceplate. However, before they could go and look for any more, a voice crackled over Kozlowski's radio. Colonel, we got one on a ship. Damn, said Kozlowski. Not good. She turned to Mahoney. Stay here and cover me. I have to check this out. Roger. She turned and started running for the other side of the ramp to gain a vantage point on the situation. Intellectually, she'd been aware that the gravity here was only 0.9 of Earth standard. However, she was shocked at how quickly she was able to move. True, these suits were a little lighter than she was used to. She didn't complain at all. She just had to adjust herself accordingly. Okay, hot shots, she said to a soldier she immediately recognized as Jastro. What's going on? Things look pretty well contained. The rest of the bunch was killing either the last standing alien or raking their weapons across the remains of ones already shot down, making sure they were dead. Jastro pointed. Sweat dripped down his temples and forehead despite his suit's air conditioning. Kozlowski followed the direction of his forefinger. The Xeno had somehow leapt up to one of the gem-like pilot blisters. Its talons were scratching along the structural spokes, and its tail whipped hard against the material, attempting to break through. Even as she stood considering, Private Ellis puffed up, raising his rifle. Hold on, soldier, said Kozlowski, holding out a halting hand. Shoot the thing with that, we'll have bug blood all over the hull. Bang, bang, the tail whipped the blister, probably giving the pilots fits. Jastro, haul the wagon over here, she commanded. Speedily, the private obeyed, grabbing hold of the robo-wagon. Kozlowski punched open the latch, lifted the lid, and looked. Selected what she needed. The thing was like a squarish grenade launcher with various tangly things extruding. She picked it up, put it up against her shoulder, aimed at the offending alien, and fired. The projectile that shot out progressed half the distance in a blur, but then at the top of its trajectory, bloomed out into a net drawn by three guided bolos. Expertly directed, they whacked past the bug, scooped it up in the net. Electricity zapped. The bug was pried off its hold and carried off meters away to bounce hard upon the land. It rolled and laid there, just a faint hiss and crackle emerging. Dead? asked Jastro. No way, Kozlowski said. I doubt it. The electrical charge in the mesh is probably just enough to stun it. What should we do? Kozlowski considered. Her first inclination was just kill it. Quick. However, she well knew that Grant was watching the proceedings and may want to imprison it with a force field in order that his scientists could examine it. She tongued her comm unit, hating having to do it. However, like a bolt out of the blue before she could do a damn thing, a plasma blast fried the bug in a net. She swung around to see the perpetrator of this, wondering whether to chew the soldier out or thank him. Standing there, looking totally competent and unfazed, was Corporal Hendrickson. It looked like it was about to break free, Colonel, the man said.